I would like to share with you a few reflections on our devotion to Mother Mary. Once a mother was taking her 10-year-old paralyzed child to Lourdes. On the way, she told her son, Whatever you ask of Jesus through his mother is never denied. They arrived in Lourdes, waiting for the blessing of the sick with the most blessed sacrament. When the priest passed by giving his blessing, the child said to Jesus, If you don't cure me, I will tell your mother. The priest was moved by these words and went back to the child and blessed him again. The child once more cried out to Jesus, If you don't cure me, I will tell your mother. He was cured instantly. At Cana in Galilee, Jesus manifested his glory by an abundant gift of wine. The abundance of wine is one of the principal signs of the blessings of the Messianic age. It was Mary who noticed that the wedding wine had run out and she brought that fact to the attention of her son. A strange dialogue and activity takes place between mother and the son. Straight away, Mary gives the order to the servants to do as her son tells them. And Jesus delights the hearts of the banquet guests with the choicest of wine. Only a few years separate Cana from Calvary. But what a difference in the two scenes. The joy and laughter of the Cana wedding feast are replaced by the pain and tears of Calvary. The guest who at the wedding feast saved the day for a newly married couple by an outpouring of wine is now saving the day for mankind by an outpouring of blood. And Mary, his mother, was there at his side. On Calvary, Jesus saw his mother. We would expect then some reference to his mother and to the disciple. But what we hear is, Woman, this is your son. In these words, a new truth is revealed. By addressing Mary, not as a mother, but as woman, Jesus draws attention away from his own blood relationship with Mary to focus attention on the fact that henceforth she is to be the mother of the disciple and he is to be her son. For the disciple who stood beside the cross is a type of all the disciples whom Jesus loves. The virgin disciple took the virgin mother as his light, his treasure, his good, as the most precious gift inherited from the Lord. And he loved her tenderly with the heart of a son. Therefore, it does not surprise me, says St. Ambrose, that he should have narrated the divine mysteries better than the others. He who had beside him the dwelling place of the divine mysteries. My dear young people, may you also take Mary into your hearts and into your lives. May she be the inspiration of your faith the luminous star on your life's journey to build a better world until we reach the eternal kingdom. Each of us in your eyes is John, and for each of us she is Mother Mary. What can we do to welcome her in our homes? Learn to walk with Mother Mary, you will never go astray. Learn to lean on her, you will never fall. Now, now 
let us thank her for her presence in our life by praying the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace Lord is the Lord with, is with, with you. you. Blessed are, are you among women, women and, and blessed, blessed is, is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.